Hey there guys, first off if you're viewing this on YouTube then please check out my website, a link is in the description box below, right under my email address. My website can aid you in finding, accessing, and analyzing seismic and GPS data, how to understand the many plots scientists use every single day and contains hundreds of seismic plots for a great many swarms and events. This video will be posted on the swarm page on my website under the how to drop down menu. Of course you already know that if you're viewing this on my website. Now this video is going to show you a new way to create professional looking seismogram, spectrogram, and spectra plots to detail any swarm or event of your choosing. As you know, if you follow my work, a large majority of the research that I share is seismic data shown via the three plots I just mentioned. Prior to discovering this, I found a new way just a couple days ago. I was originally taking screen captures and then I would copy and paste the plots into Microsoft Paint to create my three plot images. That's how I used to do it. Those plots are shown here on my website and on many of my videos as well. That process of creating plots using Swarm and Microsoft Paint would always take more time to do than I wanted. I was saddened by the fact that Swarm did not have a custom plot generator to where you could save images of these plots instead of just using the screen capture and an image program like Paint to copy and paste into. I was extremely wrong, guys, and I'm very, very happy that I was wrong. And I'm surprised that I overlooked this tool in Swarm. I literally just discovered what I'm about to show you only about four days ago. That goes to show that I still have a lot to learn and demonstrates the importance of looking through everything, through every option. Before we start, you should probably learn how to download seismic data and how to use the program Swarm. If you haven't done that, you should do that now. The Swarm page under the how-to drop-down menu, which is where this video resides, can help you do that. Also, don't forget the download seismic data page under that same menu. Once you know how to do those things, then you can move on to this video here, which will teach you how to create professional-grade seismic plots for your research. This will allow you to quickly and efficiently create hundreds of plots if need be in a short amount of time. Before I show you how to use this new tool, let's compare how long it takes to use this tool to create a plot image compared to what I was doing before. Well, the tool itself isn't new, but I just recently discovered it, so to me it's new. Mind Reader PHX, if you're watching this, I really hope that you like this new discovery, man. All of these options under the how-to menu on my website will allow you to conduct the research I conduct. It is somewhat quick, very accurate, and allows you to monitor volcanoes almost just like the professionals do, from the comfort of your own home, which is even better. Nobody can ever say ever again that the seismic and GPS data anywhere, even at Yellowstone, is being censored. Many people say that, but it has been my goal to prove that is simply not true. Really, the only way to censor anything is to shut the stations down. That is the only way to censor anything anywhere. There are so many monitoring possibilities out there for the public. You just got to know where to look. For the following example, I need an earthquake swarm. For the example, I will use this earthquake swarm here. It struck near the northern tip of West Thumb Lake at Yellowstone Caldera on May 4th, 2019. My analysis page you see here can be found on my website under the Seismic Events menu on the Yellowstone Supervolcano blog page and even contains the seismic audio to this swarm. Just go to my website, Seismic Events menu, down to Yellowstone Supervolcano, which is a blog page, and the most recent one so far is the May 4th, 2019 swarm. Here we are in the Seismic Program Swarm. I have the data stream for YLT for the uh, May 4th, 2019. And you can see the earthquake swarm right here it lasted about six minutes, not too long. It was a very, very intriguing swarm, that's for sure. Start. I'm going to have a clock on screen, hopefully, if the movie program works out correctly, just to see how long it used to take just for me to create one plot and get it saved to the folder. So we're going to do this, start the clock, let's go. There we go. What I would do is press PRTSC, PRTSC, paste, crop. What I do is I do this, get it perfectly cropped, just like that, right on the lines. Press copy. I'm in Microsoft Paint, by the way. Press paste. There we go. Now I'd go to spectrogram, PRTSC, press copy, press crop. And there we go. Press copy. Press paste, and I'm doing it as fast as I can do it. Sometimes I do it a little bit slower when I'm tired, but this is pretty much the fastest, uh, just for me to create one plot. There it is, PRTSC for print screen. And there we go, come on. Highlight that, get it on the lines, press copy, go down, press paste. 
there we go. I have one pot almost completed. And then at the end, I would always have to add a title, 2019-05-04. And the channel is YLT and the WY Network, 01 location code, short period vertical. And it doesn't have to be too, too perfect, but there it is right there. And then I press file, save as, PNG picture. Then it'd go to some random file and I'm just going to press save as untitled. And there we go. Stop the clock. That's how long it would take me to create one three pot image. Okay, so that didn't take too, too long, but it took a little bit longer than is needed. That's how long it takes for me to create one three pot image for one event. Again, it took longer than what I uh, had hoped in the beginning of learning all this, especially if you're trying to make multiple pots for an earthquake swarm. Now let's use the tool on swarm that I just recently discovered. I'm gonna do this first, but don't worry, I will show you the aspects of this new tool and how to use it in just a second. I just want to see and show you how much quicker it is. So, what we're going to do, add this to clipboard. There we go. Press spectrogram, add to clipboard. Press spectra, turn off these two settings, press OK, and, oh, whoop, go back spectra, clipboard. There we go. Press green capture, and let's just save it as clipboard.png. And, yes, just overwrite. There we go. That's how quick it was right there on screen. Yeah, that's definitely much quicker, huh? And of course it shows the channel and the date, which is the basics of what you need. Once in a great while, it'll probably need an extra label. For example, the magnitude and the depth, but you could just say that in the research that you posted with, because usually these plots are not just used by themselves. There's always some type of explanation with it or it's posted with some type of research. So really, this is basically all you need. I mean, you can open the actual saved file in uh, Microsoft Paint and add an extra label if you want, but this is quick, guys, much quicker, that is for sure. So we know that this tool on Swarm makes generating plots much easier. I thought Swarm did not have a plot generator, and if I discovered this sooner, it would have saved me a great deal of time in my past research, a great deal. Actually, I am a little frustrated that I didn't discover it till now. So let's check out all of the options on the clipboard, shall we? This one, first off, I don't really like too much. Let's go to the waveform. As you can see, you can see the clipboard right here, right? And you can see the other clipboard right here. This is the helicorder clipboard. This is the wave clipboard. Notice how whatever is seen on the waves right here, it is seen on the clipboard as well. Notice that? It changes along with this. Well, I didn't like that. I mean, some people might like that. It might be helpful sometimes, but I didn't like that. So just uncheck this. Synchronize times with helicorder wave. Uncheck that. There you go. The next thing is changing the size of these plots. Notice this. Let's do tiny. That's a little too crazy. Let's do small. Okay. Let's do medium. And let's do large. I like to set with medium. That's what I like to sit with. Actually, I'll just do auto. Auto's a little bit better. Okay, so we got that. This, I don't want to click this yet because this will remove all of the plots on the clipboard. I do not want to do that yet. Actually, let's just do it. It'll remove all of them and then you can just add them again and add them again. The spectrogram is corrupt right there because I have the settings for the spectra option on uh, log power, log frequency off, which will mess with the spectrogram. So, But just don't worry about that. I don't really want to look at that right now. This is a pick mode. I'm still unsure exactly what, I'm pretty sure this is for picking events, but I don't really use this much. I'm not exactly sure of what that is for, so I don't know. And plus, if you right click, right click with your mouse, notice that it will change the options on here. Notice how you can select these. Notice how it kind of highlights a little bit. Well, for example, let's save again to clipboard. Yes, I do want to overwrite. Press yes. Now let's go to downloads. I just want to show you this just real quick. This is kind of a glitch, I believe. Notice that we have opened the image that I just uh, saved and it does show the highlighted plot. That's not good in my opinion. I wish that they would remove that fact. So if that ever happens, just press out and then just redo it all once again. Okay, so we got that. Now this, you'd have to select. You have to select a section. To change this. I don't know why you cannot unselect. Oh, and by the way, these arrows will move this down, notice that, or move it back up. 
whatever one you have selected. This will remove the wave from the clipboard, by the way. And for these options, you have to have the item selected. I don't like, again, how it's highlighted so much and it shows on the image that you have saved, but you can scroll forward in time. Scroll forward in time. Notice how nothing else moves with it, though. But if you want it to, let's go back. If you want it to, you go over here and press Synchronize Times with Selected Wave. Press that. Go forward. Press it again. Notice that it moves it forward as well, so it's all synchronized. Press it again. Notice it does that as well. Something very interesting is you can save this. Look at this. Save all waves or save selected wave. If you have this selected, you could save this one wave or the seismic data shown in this period as a .sac file, which is very interesting. Or you can save all of this as a .sac file or mini seed. I haven't tried that yet. Apparently, it's supposed to work. Haven't tried it yet, though. Again, you could switch back and forth like this. Or you could just use the, the right button on your mouse. But the most important, I'm going to click out of all of these and just show you what the most important is. I'm going to, let's turn log power log frequency back on. Let's do this part of the swarm right here. Again, if you want to create your plots, just select what you want on the wave clipboard. Or on the waves right here on the helicorder clipboard. Select clipboard. Then go to spectrogram. Select clipboard. Then go to spectra. And do whatever you want with the Spectra op options, excuse me, press Clipboard. And then if you don't want that selected highlight to show in the image, don't touch anything because everything's pretty much set because you can do everything on the helicorder. Just press Screen Capture. And again, we're just going to save and just overwrite. But you can change the name of the file, obviously. So that's basically how you use the Clipboard to create plots. It is a type of plot generator from the Seismic Program Swarm. So that's it for right now, folks. Again, this makes it very easy to document large portions of data for future analysis or reference. I love these possibilities. You literally can monitor almost anywhere in the world with virtually the same tools that professional seismologists and geodists use every single day. And again, I'm just going to close out of these. I'm going to log power log frequency back on. I just want to, one more time, just for those out there, just want to show you how quick this is. So let's just pick the first event, shall we? Here, oh, we got an event we want. Add to clipboard, press spectrogram. Add to clipboard, press spectra. Do whatever you want with spectra settings, press OK. Add to clipboard. Press the camera icon, which will save it as a plot. And there we go, we got that one. Now let's move on to the next one. Log power, log frequency off. Gonna go to, let's say, let's zoom all the way out with these. And let's just get all these little tiny guys right in the center, right? Look at how rapid fire that is. All right, so we're going to go back to the clipboard, exit all of these, add to clipboard, add to clipboard, spectra, log power with frequency off, add to clipboard. There we go with the camera icon. Let's put two. All right, there we go. We got that. My goodness, look how quick that is. Now imagine doing that a hundred times, it would take a while, yes, but it would save you a lot of time compared to how I told you how to do it last time. I believe actually in the how to use swarm video, I told you to use Microsoft Paint. Don't do that. Do not do that. Use the clipboard, put everything on the clipboard that you want, however way you want to see it. But the only downside, again, is if you select one, for some reason, you cannot unselect it. You cannot unselect it. Again, click this right here to synchronize with whatever you're seeing all the way back here. Notice that how it synchronizes with this and moves with the wave plot right here. Notice that. So you can do that to set up whatever you want. But what I usually do is I just click out and just do what I want on here. For example, waves on here, the waveforms to clipboard, spectrogram to clipboard, spectra. With power frequency off, which is why the spectrogram is all messed up. But yeah, I don't like to have that checked. You can have that checked if you want, but I don't like that. But again, this is the plot generator, which can allow you to generate seismogram, spectrogram, and spectra plots in the blink of an eye for whatever earthquake swarm you want, however many of these you want, and you can save them in as fi uh, image files. And they're very good, guys. They're professional grade. They look pretty cool. Well, except for this faulty spectrogram plot, because the spectrogram plot is connected to the spectra plot. I don't know why. I don't know why the settings are like that, but again, I have learned a great deal since I first discovered that all of these monitoring possibilities exist. I was quite excited, and I still enjoy analyzing random swarms and events on my free time. Well, this video is now over, but remember the swarm that I used? 
I know my analysis page contains the seismic audio of this swarm, but just for fun, here's the seismic audio for the May 4th, 2019 rapid fire swarm at West Thumb Lake. The swarm contained approximately 21 events within 6 minutes, with a few tiny stragglers following the swarm. Also, no events within this swarm have been reported as of yet. They might report them soon, but the largest event was likely no larger than a magnitude 1.8. Now I highly suggest using headphones, but be wary of how the volume increases suddenly, just in case. The following is 12 minutes of seismic data compressed into 19 seconds. The data was obtained via the Iris Time Series URL Builder. The plots, the data for the plots, were obtained by the Data Select URL Builder. And this is from station YLT in the WY Network Short Period Vertical. YLT was the closest station to the swarm. Well, here it is.